everybody, and welcome to the 100th day of the 100 days of the 2023 changes to the National Electrical Code series. Uh, boy, if you've made it through all these videos, congratulations. That's, uh, that's quite a commitment on your part uh, to learn the changes in the 2023, and, and I think you should be commended for that. You know, the fact that you've watched 100 of these uh, is, is evidence that you care about the electrical industry and that you care about your job and your willingness to learn, I think, should, should really be applauded. So congratulations. Uh, way to go. We're almost through the woods. So the last video that we're going to cover here is actually a short one, Article 760. Um, this is going to be a very fast video. I, I think it's a good code change. I think it's an important code change, uh, but it's a really simple one. Not a lot to talk about here when it comes to Article 760 fire alarm systems. The change that was made here is a new Section 760.33 surge protection. Surge protection is now required for fire alarm control panels. Oh, there you go. <laughs> fire alarm control panel must have a listed surge protective device on its supply side. So there you go. You got to have surge protection for your fire alarm control panel. Um, I think most people would agree that, that this is probably a good idea. Uh, should it be a code requirement? You know, some people are saying, look, surge protection is a, is a luxury. Well, it's a luxury for your refrigerator. You know, and it's a luxury for your TV or your PlayStation or something, your beer fridge, right? But when it comes to protecting the fire alarm system of a commercial building, is that really a luxury or is that a necessity? I'm going to go ahead and argue. I, I'm going to say it's a necessity. I mean, look, what is surge protection? It's over voltage protection, right? That, that's what Article 242 is titled. Surge protective devices are covered in Article 242, which is titled what? Over voltage protection, because that's what it is. We have over current protection in the, in the way of fuses and circuit breakers, and none of us is going to argue about how important Article 240 is in over current protection, but what about over voltage protection? If you have a surge and it wipes out your beer fridge, eh, that kind of sucks. You know, having a, a warm beer and a cold steak, eh, that's no fun. But losing the fire alarm control panel for a high-rise building? Now, obviously, that can't happen, so I think it's probably good that we now have a requirement for a listed surge protection device on the supply side of the fire alarm control panel. The code does not really specify where this should be. Should this be a type 1 surge protective device, which is upstream of the service disconnect? Could be. Right? It doesn't say that it has to be directly upstream, it just says somewhere on its supply side. So a type 1 surge protection device can be installed upstream of the service disconnect and protect the whole building. You could use a type 2 surge protection device, which is downstream of the service disconnect, or you could use a type 3 surge protection device, which is the individual point of use type, like a receptacle type or a relocatable power tap. Um, it, the code doesn't specify whether it's type 1, type 2, or type 3. I think the best approach is a tiered approach where you have either a type one or type two kind of protecting the whole building and then you layer it down and get closer and closer to the individual components that you consider worth protecting. Again, you don't need to put a surge protective device on every single thing in the building, but we do need to protect the fire alarm control panel. So I would tell you to probably put in a receptacle to, if it's cord and plug connected, it's probably not. Uh, but, you know, I would put in a circuit breaker type at a minimum, surge protection device, and then protect that panel upstream so that you have two layers. Because remember, surges not only can come from lightning, they can come from the utility, and they can come from the end user equipment. So it can go all three directions, from the utility towards us, from us to the utility, or from above uh, in the form of lightning. So you want to give it as many means of protection as you can. So a single device anywhere upstream of the fire alarm control panel is all that Article 760 requires, but it might be a sound design option to put this closer to the fire alarm control panel, and that way it would protect it more directly. So there you go. That's Article 760. Not a lot to talk about, but listen, we made it. We did it. We made it through 100 days of the 2023 NEC. Uh, I'm going to have to look back and see exactly how many minutes this whole video series is, but I, I think if you were to stretch it out, it's probably about 12 hours worth of material. So if you're an instructor, man, I, I gave you 12 hours worth of material to, to talk about to your students. And, and really, that was kind of maybe my biggest target with this video series as instructors, because that, that's what I am. 
And I remember when I was a young instructor just starting out, there wasn't a lot of resources. I mean, you, you had books, right? You, you could read books, uh, but by the time those are published, you're, you're already needing to teach. So if you weren't reading books, you were just reading the report on proposals and the report on comments and trying to read what the panel actions were, and, and that was tough. So I really wanted to create an instructor resource as much as anything. And I hope if you're an instructor, I hope this was valuable information to you. Uh, if you're an electrician, I hope this is valuable as well. You know, hopefully this will this will tell you what the rules are so that we can comply and, and make sure we don't get get written up by the inspector. Uh, same thing if you're a design professional. We need to make sure that our design complies and it's it's better to do that at the at the drawing stage than it is at the installation stage. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, the entire series. Uh, let me know. Read me a comment, and uh, if you think it was good, let me know. If you think it sucked, well, you know, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. <laughs> but if you think it sucked, let me know. All right. Thanks so much, and uh, thanks for joining me. Take care, everybody.